Okay, here we are back again. I realized I meant to show you in that last video how to use this wooden needle holder. So we'll start with that and then we're actually gonna move on to actual poking wool with the needle, uh, which is fun. And so this wooden needle holder, it's, you can, for years I just used these by themselves, but it's not that comfortable. If you're gonna be spending a lot of time felting, you wanna be use something that's more ergonomic and that's why I include these with the kit. It's um, very comfortable to use and uh, not only does it work as the needle holder, you can, let me just show you that you can store a needle inside of here. So I usually have one of these in my purse and so you can store the needle when you're not using it inside there. So that's a needle stored. And then let me just take it out. So there's a cork, I call this the cork. There's a tapered piece that fits inside the handle. And I'm gonna take this out now. And then when you when you take the needle out of there, what you could pull from the shaft of the needle, but I find that that's, that's also likely to, could break the needle. So what I do is I use my thumbnail and twist off this, there's a notch at the end and I of these needles is a L, bend and I use that to twist it off. Then to use the needle, it's the same thing except that I'm gonna put the notched part on the narrow end so that it then will fit in back inside the handle with the needle felt facing out. Now these are gonna be tight at first and then um, as you use them, they'll get easier, but you push that, you push that in really securely. And now I'm ready to felt and this is, um, this is more comfortable for your hand. I'm gonna talk about ergonomic some more, and I think when you're seeing me on the Zoom, you'll see my body posture better. I'm not, oops, see, I just kicked the, kicked my tripod. Um, I'm not sure how to show my body posture um, with the video right now, but we will we will talk about that more on, on, on when we're in the live sessions. So you wanna keep your shoulders relaxed, you wanna keep your body in a comfortable position, you're gonna be doing this for a while, you don't wanna use, I'm just gonna, I can show you this, you don't wanna use your wrist, you wanna keep your wrist straight when you're, you're, you're gonna be doing this poking motion. And it's not jabbing hard, it's a very light bouncing motion and you will get faster, but it's not important to start out fast, right? So it's this light bouncing motion and we're, see how I'm just, I'm going in just those barbs that we talked about and not further. If you stab really hard and I go all the way in, um, I'm, it's fine in the beginning when you're trying to get the center of something firmed up, but when you're trying to get the, the outside to look nice, that's just gonna leave marks. Um, so light, motion. I don't use my elbow. My elbow is not part of this. My wrist is not part of this. I'm sort of using my shoulder a little bit, but I'm keeping it relaxed and in a good position. And the other thing I want to say is about ergonomics. Um, like I said, you can have this on a tabletop. I sometimes work at a table and then just to kind of not avoid repetitive stress, I will often bring this onto my lap. You can actually do this on the couch, um, in bed, anywhere you're relaxing, you can actually, I've done it on the beach. <laughs> so you can, you can um, find different positions and sometimes just changing your position every once in a while really helps. Something that's comfortable for a while may um, start feeling uncomfortable and you just switch positions. So one more thing. So as I'm, I'm going to be trying, this is like the felted egg. I'm just going to demonstrate some poking. Um, what we'll, let's talk about a few things. Let's start with the ergonomics, which is that not only keep your wrists in a, um, in a comfortable position, but you're going to move instead of, if I need to felt this side of this piece, if I'm right-handed, I'm not gonna go like this and cross over and, and twist myself around to poke over here. I'm gonna keep moving my piece. So whether it's a, whether it's finishing stages and I'm poking the front of this or the back of this, I'm always moving it so that it's in a comfortable position for me. Um, and not, you'll, you'll see when you're first starting, you might reach across and to poke the far side of something, but it's always better to move, just keep moving the piece around. So even if I'm just trying to smooth out this egg, I'm constantly, I'm gonna try to poke everywhere, but I'm constantly moving it around. Okay, so 
um, not breaking needles. The key to not breaking needles is to always, whatever angle you poke in, you're gonna pull the needle out exactly the same angle. Uh, like I said, you can change your angle of your needle, like each poke can be a slightly different, but every poke that goes in has to come out exactly the same. The firmer this gets, even a slight change of position during while I'm, the needle's in there is gonna snap these needles, they're so fragile. So, it, and as, if you check a needle every once in a while, because sometimes you can tell it starts getting bent, I meant to bring a bent needle today, but I have some bent needles I keep, um, I'll show another time. If it's starting to get, it should be perfectly straight. If your needle is starting to get bent, it means you're doing a little bit of some kind of twisting motion as you poke in and out and it's going to snap the needle it's going to break if your needle is bent you should switch to a different needle um, if your needle breaks be sure to find this sharp piece you do not want this on your floor you don't want to step on that um, and sometimes these needles are magnetic and you're searching everywhere and you realize it's actually stuck to the shaft of the needle but you do you do want to be really careful to find it um, especially if you have people walking around barefoot, if you have pets. So that's, that's the key to that. And just, just uh, it's, it's, I'm not there to check your form, but we will be doing that on the Zoom sessions to check your, check your form and make sure that you're poking in the, whatever angle you poke in, that you bring the needle straight out so that it doesn't, you can see how theoretically the harder this gets, the more, the easier it is to snap a needle. Um, the other thing is I don't, a lot of people store the needles like that in the mat and I don't do that because or, or in the earlier years, I broke so many needles like that because this could, you, you, you hit this accidentally, you knock this over and the needle will break in the pad. So I don't do that either. Um, I lay my needles flat. If I'm putting them away, I'll put them back in the tube where like I showed you, you can turn it around and keep, keep one, um, your favorite needle, you can keep it in the handle, um, I'll take it with you or just have it right ready to go uh let's see a couple other things we went over how not to break a needle and we went over how to use the the best part of the needle the, the barbed part and the other thing i want to talk about is not poking your fingers so we start i like to start with this egg because once you have this egg you're it's it you you're unlikely to poke your needle um, it's really on the second project where we're going to start from scratch and be felting uh, a ball from scratch and be starting smaller where you have to be careful. But I will just say for now, because we'll go over that in more detail for now, this is a craft where even though you can do it anywhere and it's very relaxing, I, I, I bring it on trips, I do it in doctor's offices <laughs> in the waiting room, um, you really you have to keep your eyes on your work. It's the kind of thing, the reason I still poke myself is that I still look up to talk to people sometimes when I'm felting or I'll be watching, sort of watching TV and I really just need to be listening and not watching. So I poke myself still because I'm not keeping my eyes on my work all the time. I'm much better than I used to be, but that's really important. Um, Unlike knitting, you don't have to count, you don't have to follow a pattern, but you do have to just watch what you're doing, mostly so you don't go, oops, and wind up bleeding on your work. So, um, but like I said, if you do poke yourself, it bleeds for just a second. I rarely, rarely need a Band-Aid. Um, usually just like take a tissue and blot it and it'll stop in a second. And then you can keep going. If you're bleeding, I would get a Band-Aid. <laughs> so, <laughs> all right. Um, one more thing, like my egg went flying, I'm gonna find that and, whoops. Okay, or maybe we'll edit this out. Um, <laughs> just for your, so poke, the other thing is some people say, oh, this really gets at your frustrations because you're stabbing. Um, but you know what? You really don't wanna stab really hard. It's you're more likely, if, that, if you stab really hard, if you poke yourself, it will hurt more. And it's not really doing any better for your work. You just want to you want to have this very light, pouncy, bouncy motion, um, stabbing really hard every once in a while. If you're trying to make like a really a dent in something, like here, I'm gonna stab a little harder and show you that I can make a dent. 
um, and sometimes you do want to do this. I sometimes make eye sockets or something like that, but um, that's the only reason you would stab a little harder because you're going to felt it up just fine, keeping it light, and you're much less likely to hurt yourself and break a needle um, if, you, if you keep it light. So that's it, and um, we're going to get started on our project.